in the hole, Moosehead. For the past five years, the best skiers in the country have converged on Crested Butte, Colorado to tackle the steep and the deep, and sometimes soar like eagles, to push the envelope on skis like few skiers have ever before. Four days of competition, men and women, the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Crested Butte, Colorado for the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. I'm Rod Elisha, and along with me, Sandy Santucci, the founder of this event five years ago. And, Sandy, extreme skiing has come a long way in a very short while. Yeah, it definitely has, Rod. Back when we started this event in 92, there was only one other event, the World Extreme Skiing Championships in Valdez, Alaska. Since then, it's truly become an international competitive venue. We've got a race going on later on this month in Chamonix, France, New Zealand, South America. It's really come a long way. And it's not just a sport of jumps, bumps, and thrills, and high-speed aggressive turns. It's a combination of all those aspects of skiing makes it truly exciting. A cumulative scoring system over the three days of competition, a chance for the competitors to get a feel for the snow, still rushing all out down the mountain. And the day's venue, Headwall, an 11,800 foot with 40 degree slopes, stone for cliff bands at the top, leading into a wide open bowl in the middle, and big old bumps at the bottom, Rod. Also a good opportunity for the skiers to get some good, solid, aggressive air. For the judges, a chance to whittle the field, making decisions on who makes the cut and who goes home early. Remember, each day the field is cut in half. One of the most important things for the competitors to remember, day in and day out, Rod, is consistency. Finding the fine line between playing it safe and hanging it all out. That's right, Sandy, a minor mistake you can get by with, but a major lapse of concentration and you're effectively out of the competition. One thing the competitors always talk about here in Crested Butte and at any extreme competition that I've been for that matter is their love of this sport. Being able to express themselves on skis while accepting these severe challenges of Mother Nature, being able to push any and all fear they might have into the facts of their minds. And Fanny, while these are the Saab United States Extreme Skiing Championships over the five years, a handful of foreign skiers have made their mark here in Crested Butte. And here we're watching Kazu Miyano from Japan come through that line and head wall like I've never seen anyone come through. He didn't even stop, just burst right through, looking really hot. The Americans, like Shane McConkey, as you might have expected, have dominated the competition, but the foreigners have experienced mixed results over the years. Further showing the growth of the sport, U.S. ski team members like Wendy Fisher have also burst onto the extreme scene. Today's sport of extreme skiing demands not just excellent skiing prowess, but all-out athletic ability as well. Many of these athletes train and compete all year long, as well as some follow the snow to south of the equator to places like New Zealand and Argentina, while others cross-train in sports like rollerblading and mountain biking. Fifty-two skiers advanced to day number two. The men's standings after day one, Peter Bowers on top, Kazu Takamiyano still hanging in at number six. Wendy Fisher leading for the women after day number one. The 1996 Saab U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. Brought to you by Saab Automobiles. And by Nikon Sunglasses. For radios by Motorola and Edge Tech, the official clothing of extreme skiing. And by Crested Butte Mountain Resort, Crested Butte, Colorado. Welcome back to the Saab U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships at Crested Butte. Competition for day number two moves to two separate venues, Sakatumi Ridge and Staircase. Both run shorter and steeper than Headwall, Neither quite as bumpy, plenty of lines to choose from, especially for big time air launchers like Seth Morrison. And this is a run where a guy like Seth Morrison can really let it hang out. He really lets it rip after he gets the big air. 
Not to mention Wendy Fisher continuing here in her brilliance in her first ever extreme competition. She's currently in first place for the women. The runs also give the judges a good chance to analyze the free flowing styles of a guy like Justin Patnode, Tyler Williams from Aspen, Colorado. Day two is also an excellent example of how these competitors push the envelope on skiing. For spectators both here and at home, a study of the differing skiers' styles and smoothness as they carry down the mountain. One of the keys to remember, if it looks ugly and out of control, the skier is probably not being scored very well. Plenty of battling going on for the top spots. Still a very close competition with numerous skiers trying to distinguish themselves with the judges. Nineteen ninety five U.S. champion Shane McConkey still trying to garner the top spot currently in third. With a slow pitch of 41 to 44 degrees, Sakatumi Ridge is the perfect venue for this day two competition. The skiers literally drop five to 10 feet each time they make a turn. It's almost like free falling. The 1996 Saab US Extreme Skiing Championships. Men standings after day two, Peter Bauer still on top. For the women, newcomer Wendy Fisher continues to surprise. Ultra steep slopes, bumps, jumps, and some sunbaked crust for day number two of our competition here at the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. And Sandy, while we have a pause in the action, let's talk a little bit about what the judges are looking for. Rod, it's subjective judging that makes it very difficult, but they're looking for aggressive fall line skiing and the skier who can utilize the majority of the terrain on the run. The judges are also looking for good control or the ability to use the body and the skis in unison. Technique, solid technique, Rod. Good edge-to-edge -edge control dominating the mountain rather than vice versa. Fluidity, the ability to flow down the hill just like water. And difficulty. Difficulty in a chosen path composed of steepness, exposure, in other words, rocks and trees, and how a skier manipulates that section. All together, a collective demonstration of energy, excitement, style, and aggressive solid airs. Not necessarily big airs, but clean with good takeoffs and landings. Well, now that we know what the judges are looking for, let's let you sit at home and judge for yourself. Let's rock and roll with our competitors. And welcome back to the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships at Crested Butte, Colorado. Over several days of competition, we have whittled the field down. 22 men going to the finals and five women. More surprising than the names at the top of the list going into the finals, those that are conspicuously absent. People like Dave Swanwick, the 94 U.S. and world winner, and Kim Reichelm, a triple crown winner. That's right. Dave Swanwick, who is a resident of Crested Butte, is in Europe right now filming for Warren Miller. Couldn't get back in time, so he opted to stay and finish out the film with Warren. Kim Reichelm, we understand that she's decided to retire from extreme skiing once again. 
Well, I set the goals last season to try to win all the competitions I entered, and I accomplished that goal. And it takes a lot of time. You really have to train a lot. You have to be focused. You have to be in good shape. And there's other things that I want to do with my life and my career. So um, I've focused on that, and I'm just skiing more for fun now. Kim Reichel, the skiing ambassador here at Crested Butte, a spectator this year, along with hundreds of others for the Saab U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. Shane McCocky, not a spectator, the defending champion, going back after his crown. Trying to knock him off the top block, Dave Bluestein, a local favorite from right here in Crested Butte, they call him Blue. As well as Seth Morrison, another local favorite, loves to get big air and go all out. Pete Bauer is looking for his first championship. He's the current leader. He's been third here before. Jill Sickles, Matlock, the 94 U.S. Extremes champion, really going after it this time. Great guns. Against this gal, Allison Gannett, 1995 South American champion. She's gunning for her first ever U.S. title as well. But in front of her, Wendy Fisher, the current leader and a newcomer to the sport of extreme skiing. And it all culminates here with the finals for Crested Butte's U.S. Extreme Skiing Championship. Phoenix Spellbound is our site. And Sandy, these are the prime lines. Well, we'll be starting at the top of the Spellbound Bowl, heading out skiers left into the Spellbound Glades and High Life. All of the skiers will probably end up in the dead end chutes. It's a dramatic way to end the competition. The snow conditions are great right now at the top up there as we watch Justin Patno blast out in his usual flamboyant style. The thing that gets me about Justin is he has lots of energy and excitement on skis, always moving always grooving to the hill. Yeah, Justin's been a veteran of professional skiing competitions for a long time right now. He's known for his big Wiley helicopters on the Pro Mogul Tour, down. but he's playing a little bit That's conservative right now. He could have opted to go into the dead end shoots, which have, would have gotten him a lot more points, but uh, he opted to go the conservative way. We'll see how the judges fare with Justin as we go to the top. Last year's winner, Shane McConkey, Rod. Currently in third place, he's got a lot of great skiing to make up if he wants to take back his championship. Just hanging on the railing as he slides down these huge pillows here at the top of the Spellbound Bowl. And you can see Shane McConkey also comfortable in the air, just like Justin Patnode. Now let's watch him rip into the top section of the dead end shoots. Very steep here as the camera angle shows you. This is what the competitors are up against when they're in this cliff band as he blasts onto this pillow above the crowd in the dead end shoots. Not only are you in front of the crowd right here, but you're very, very tired. Two runs over four minutes on each of them. McConkie loses his footing, tumbles through the finish line. That is not going to reclaim his championship. Next up, from right here in Crested View, Colorado, Dave Bluestein knows this terrain well. The fans know him well. They call him Blue. Yeah, Dave has been competing on this mountain since 1992, the inaugural U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. He has a lot of local knowledge, and he knows what the judges are looking for, and he's taken some very aggressive lines. I've been impressed with Dave all through the week. He's been really skiing well. We talked earlier, Sandy, about the key being line choice, and Blue's got a good one here. Nice launch at the end, and through the finish line before star fishing, but Dave Bluestein is gonna score well. He was through the finish line. And we'll be right back for more of the Saab U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships here at Crested Butte. Don't go away. 94 U.S. Extreme Skiing Champion, Jill Sickles Matlock warming up at the start. Our current standings, Wendy Fisher, Allison Gannett, and Matlock all bunched up at the top, each with a chance to win. First in the start gate, Allison Gannett from right here in Crested Butte, Colorado. Winner in September of the South American Extreme Championship, her first ever victory. She was second here last year when she took a conservative line on her final run and was passed by Kim Reichelm, the eventual champion. Rod, I guarantee you she's not gonna let that happen again this year. She's aggressive. She's skiing the fall line, very intense. She's out for victory today. Well, she's had an uphill battle all week. She has had a bout of the flu, lost a friend in France in an avalanche, but a nice aggressive line, and uh, despite a tumble through the finish line, a very nice run for Allison Gannett. Back up top now, Jill Sickles Matlock, the 1994 winner here in Crested Butte. Again, a local, knows the course well, and knows how to win. 
trying to dial in right now on her second U.S. Extreme Championship. Rob, when I watch Jill ski, I see confidence. She knows this mountain very well. It's her backyard, and whenever you've got that going for you, you can ski that way. She's skiing very well today. However, she's not skiing as aggressive a line as Allison. It'll be interesting to see how the judges mark her run. Back up top now, this is Wendy Fisher from Incline Village, Nevada. As we mentioned before, a former member of the U.S. ski team, now schools here under Kim Reichelm, last year's champion. And you can see great edge-to-edge -edge control dating back to her days on the ski team as a slalom skier. Yeah, she very much does look like she's skiing in a very steep slalom. She's a good skier, lacking a little bit of experience in this steep stuff, and I think today on the final day, it's showing a little bit. She stops right there. That's going to cost her dearly in the continuity area. But nonetheless, Wendy Fisher, the newcomer, looking really good. Well, good, but not great in the judge's eyes, Sandy. Her lack of aggressiveness on the final run allowed her to be passed by two skiers, including our new champion, Jill Sickles Matlock. You know, I came in today thinking that I could make up those points and I could come out on top. So I skied the lines that I knew. Um, pretty much I, I, I checked out one other line that I might have tried, but I just couldn't do it. It was too big of air. So I stuck with my line I had, and uh, I, think it, I think it was strong enough. So. Definitely strong enough for the win for Jill Sickles Matlock. Second time, the winner here at the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championship. The second year in a row, Allison Gannett second, and the newcomer, Wendy Fisher, third. Back up top in the Spellbound Bowl, the men beginning to visualize their runs. And first up, Brant Moles from Park City, Utah, coming into the final day in fifth place. Rod, if he wants to move up, he's going to have to do something dramatic, and I think he's going to do it right now. A huge air, a great landing. The judges will probably score that very well. It wasn't reckless, and he had a very controlled landing, and now he's skiing good fall line, aggressive lines here at the top of the dead end shoots. Let's see what he does for the spectators below. Well, a slim chance for Moles to win, but he could dramatically move up from fifth place into the medal standings with a very good run, and he's got one going here. And he caps off his run with another great air and a great landing. The judges will like it. Next up, Seth Morrison. Took a conservative line like Gannett did last year and ended up finishing second place. In fact, he's been the bridesmaid here three times in a row. But he's been skiing like he's from another planet, as the other competitors have been saying. And you can see why right there. Seth Morrison skiing very aggressive, skiing very fast through these trees, known as the High Life Glade section, really showing off his style and his tenacity. Always primed for action. The other competitors watching him as they know that he could do anything here at the bottom. Very comfortable in the air. Likes to launch and does right into the finish line as the bottom of the dead end shoots. A great but not spectacular run for Seth Morrison. The 1996 Saab U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships from Crested Butte, Colorado. Brought to you by Saab Automobile. And by Nikon Sunglasses. Ford Radios by Motorola and Edge Tech. And by AT&T, official telecommunication company of the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. We'll be right back in Crest View, Colorado for the rest of the finals. We're back for the conclusion of the men's finals here at the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. We're having a hold on the course because there's two spectators that have somehow drifted onto the course and we're doing one rescue at the top of the course. This bottom part, we have a Looks like a 12-year-old kid that got lost and drifted over onto the top of these cliffs. And we have two patrolmen right now uh, going to rope him up and get him out of there. And so we got a hold on the course. Uh, we got a call that there was a, a kid in the middle of the course in the cliffs that uh, was crying. He couldn't get himself off the, out of there. Uh, so we went in there, uh, found him. What we did was we just tied him up to a rope and, and encouraged him to traverse out of there basically on his own. Well, a happy ending to our rescue operation and a prime example of how difficult the terrain is here at the Dead End Chutes during the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. Well, during our course hold, a number of competitors up top watching the conditions change. One of those, Adam Kumi from right here in Crested Butte, Colorado. And like many other Crestibutians, they love those Telemark skis. Adam Kumi, no different, skiing for eight years on the Telemarks. Gets off balance a little bit. That'll cost him a little bit in the fluidity continuity points, Rod. 
but great slashing turns up above sand. If he can get it back together, he can still score well. And a nice launch at the end, so Adam Kumi shows you can make great aggressive turns and launch big air on three pins. And now it's time for Peter Bowers, our current leader. He has been skiing excellent all week long, puts together a dominating run right here, and he is our champion. And Rod, he has been skiing what the judges want to see, consistent, aggressive fall lines. Look at the terrain that he is in right now. The visibility has gone to zero. It doesn't seem to be bothering Bowers at all, and that is why he has got such a commanding lead and has kept it all week long. He well, continues to dominate. He's got to keep his focus and his concentration right here. Again, this is a three-day competition, cumulative points. He's got to finish it off big, and a nice launch into the finish for Peter Bowers of Tahoe City, California. That's going to be good enough to win. Peter Bowers is our champion. Seth Morrison finishes second for the fourth time, and Brant Moles moves up to third place. And it, it came together out here this week in Colorado. Um, it's a three-day event. Car's a lot of stamina. Uh, I must have racked up probably about 500 vertical feet in the air. That's usually rest time. But in actuality, that gives us steep skiers a good adrenaline, and it, it picks up our skiing. Um, you got to ski for the judges as well as the crowd. And so, yeah, coming in to today's venue, being in first place, um, it, it was kind of a head game, and I, and I played it well. I knew, I knew my competition and I upped my lines according to theirs. And basically, I just turned it on. I was, I was born and raised in the Colorado mountains, and, and I'm, you know, I'm number one here. Congratulations to Peter Bowers, tasting victory here in a snowy, crested butte on his final run, holding it all together. Earlier in the afternoon, while the sun was still shining, he showed what it takes to win the championship. Huge air, dominating turn, an aggressive line. A little bit of everything weather-wise for the U.S. Extremes here in Crested Butte. As you can see, snow, and of course, we had sunshine as well. But the one thing we definitely had was fantastic skiing for the fifth year in a row. Right. It was, this element change here, it's got to play havoc in the minds of the competitors. They rose above it. They skied incredible. And uh, we pulled off another great event. It's only going to get bigger, only going to get better. And I can't wait till next year. Well, another huge competition. Our winners move on to the World Extreme Skiing Championships in Valdez, Alaska. As for us, that'll do it. We hope you enjoyed the show. For Sandy Santucci, I'm Ron Elisha. For all of our crew, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next year at the U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships here in Crested Butte. One word to describe extreme skiing, that'd be uh, adventure. Uh, yeah, thank you. This has been another wild ride, courtesy of JFP International Video Productions.